Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Hasban Allahu wa Nimo Wakil The Lord is my light and my salvation Whom shall I fear? And yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you art with me Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies You anoint my head with oil My cup runneth over and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me All the days of my life And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever Amen Assalamu alaikum Welcome to Johnny's Bite It's Monday it's uh, cloudy out there. You want to be very, very careful. We have entered the fifth week. The children in the basic school still have not been fed. The caterers are on strike. The government doesn't care. That's the indication I get. We are still in the fifth week. The government has refused to bring out the report from Al Jazeera, the response from Al Jazeera. We are still in the fifth week. And the government has done nothing about the situation and the rot happening at Gehok. So tomorrow, I will go for the full haul while we're in Kumau. But you see, we're in Kumau, and uh, the stories I'm getting from there is that everything is going on well. NDC is campaigning, MPP is campaigning. I say, wow, interesting. And then I ask myself, why all of this has become necessary? It's become necessary because the member of parliament then, Baswa, is, may, he, may he rest in peace. Bless his soul. He died while still in, in power on the chair. And so there's a by-election that will happen tomorrow in Kumeu. Kumeu is a stronghold of the new patriotic party. The NDC wants to get that, that slice of power. But the people in Kumeu are even shocked because for a very, very long time, they haven't seen the caliber of people they are seeing in Kumeu, from president to vice president to everybody else that matters in the NPP and NDC. They're seeing them in flesh and blood in Kumeu. So at some point, some of them were even asking, our men on the ground are telling us, some of them were even asking whether or not Ghana cared about them this much. Because not long ago, they were complaining about the state of their roads. Listen. This assembly, them say, two thousand years ago. Assembly <laughs> So this is just a glimpse of what the people thought. This was sometime in April where Akuma FM, a sister station in the Shanti region, had gone to Kumeu to go and find out from the people. You heard them. And when the MPP is in power, they do nothing for them, even though they vote for them. They have complained about their road, sort has been cut, no show. It will interest you to know that within this short period, about three weeks, uh, three weeks or so, we have done about a 10 kilometer, 10 to 11 kilometer work in Kumeu. Town roads have been asphalted in Kumeu. Now the electorates, because they have been told in the past that they, they have short memories, they may go and vote in a certain way. That's fine. That's their decision. But to the extent that we take the people for granted, where we take the people for granted and pretend that everything is okay, show me, Chairman, to me begging the people for votes. Show me. So here he is, the chairman in the stronghold on his knees begging for votes. How long didn't the people in Kumau ask for roads? 
How long did it? And you heard the gentlemen. They, they, they lived there. They were asking for things. Nobody gave them attention. And this is the, these are the things that politicians do. When they need votes, they come, they eat with you, they play with your children, they carry them, they will, they will prepare your banku for you, they will braid your hair, they will eat kenke with you, they will, they will come and play football with you, they will do clean-up exercise. With, as soon as they finish getting the vote, bam, they are gone. Did we not see a similar thing in 2020 and 2016 and the years before that? After that, what happened? Everybody is in Kumehu today, as I speak. Everybody is there. National executives, constituency executives, regional executives, members of parliament. They, in fact, today, even if they have something to do in Accra, they will not come. They will be there in Kumehu. Mark my words. And they should be bowing down their heads in shame. They are pretending to love the Honorable Basua so much. But you know, in this country, under a human rights lawyer, we had to wait for nine solid months against act nine, nine, uh, the, the, the Local Government Act. We had to wait for nine solid months just to approve an MCE for Kumewu. And in that approval, the same Basua whose funeral everybody is attending and everybody is pretending, uh, say, uh, pretending that, oh, we like Basua so much, he was a good man. In Ghana, when you die, you suddenly become a good man, even the, the, the most wicked person on earth. Watch this video. now you saw the heavily armed police people there heavily armed though police people that was the member of parliament the late member of parliament that's him on your screen he was prevented from entering the voting center and the argument was that he doesn't have a vote. We know that members of parliament are ex officio of, of the. They don't vote. This was an assembly activity. He said he wants to be there. They said no. They prevent. That's why today is being eulogized. The same Baswa who is being presented to the people as if they loved him too much. The pain and the mafia they play. The thinking that they put on him. Who knows? That may have caused his death. He was prevented. Show the video again. Let me talk about it. He was prevented from entering. Member of parliament. They are choosing a DC who will work with him. He was prevented. He was prevented from entering. Member of parliament, though. He's not an assemblyman. He's not a watchman. He's not a gate man. He's not a deputy chief farmer of Kumewu. He's a big man father of the constituency he was prevented from entry show the video show the video so that that don't I'll, I'll speak about it he was prevented from entering heavily armed policemen and i'm not the one saying it it is there the people were asking him to go and watch tv3 of course the station of choice he will listen to 3fm or akuma fm stations of choice but he was prevented look at him he was explaining himself such an embarrassing spectacle Today we are in Kumewu pretending that everything is okay. Now, what even broke my heart was the Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. You have been given an opportunity to campaign at a local election. Listen to him. The why never to a man, number one, and yes, sir. And DC, Omunam Ho, Omunsi, and to Obama, and DC candidate. Omukasa, you will feel more now. And I say, and drink Mukai, and DC, Omuahono, 
yada susu mudum somo efienum enya sa omu pesa ya sa kodum sobium omu sa pesa ya sa kodum sobium ana sa mu pesa on konfa a konfa ma omu kobokina okay andi se braso factories mi onu pe na omu timisi ye two yeah, dear, it's over 150. So the first question I want to ask the vice president is, where is the factory in Kumeu? And the factories that are supposed to have been, uh, uh, what do you call it, built and are working, how have they helped with the 43 items on our benchmark value list? How have they helped to reduce our import basket? That's the first one I want to ask him. And I am surprised that the vice president is still talking about 2016 campaign, a confirm and doom so. Our lights are still going up. They call it doom CSC. You are the head of the economic management team. Have you seen your dollar in your CD? Before, in 2016, before you became vice president, boss, how much was a liter of fuel? How much was a gallon of fuel? Today, the price of a liter of fuel could have bought us two or three gallons in the past. You are the head of the economic management team. You are not even ashamed that you have taken us to the IMF after bragging to us that you not take us to IMF. And that we are a proud nation. Now the IMF has come in. Do we suddenly lose our proudness as a nation or our pride as a nation? You are the head of the economic management team. Kumeu is a farming area. Are you able to give them a report on planting for food and jobs? You are the head of the economic management team. The youth in Kumeu are looking for jobs. Are you able to tell them in their faces that you have provided jobs for them? You are the head of the economic management team. The schools and the trees in Kumu, are you able to stand in front of them to tell them you have converted them into modern schools that your children attend in Accra and outside the country? You are the head of the economic management team. You want to be president. Are you able to confidently beat your chest and say, Kumewu is a stronghold of the NPP, and that these are the things that I can itemize that we have done for you? If Honorable Baswa had not died, and that there was a fact that there was going to be a by-election, the roads in Kumewu would not have been fixed. In fact, we even fixed the town roads in Kumewu first before we moved to want to fix the road that leads to Kumewu. And those are the things that the people there expect for you to connect. Of course, there's sycophancy and hypocrisy and hero worship and the bandwagon that will come along with it. BBBC. It is the Ghanaian electorates that I blame. Because they love their parties more than the nation called Ghana. We are in Kumewu. We are doing localized campaign. You are talking Dumso. You are talking a confirm. Have you finished talking about PDS? Have you finished talking about a Japa deal? Have you finished talking about Professor Kabla Frimpong Boatin's report on Galamsi? Have you finished talking about Al Jazeera's gold mafia? Have you finished talking about the fact that forty million dollars worth of gold is smuggled out of this country every month? Have you speak, finished speaking about the president benefiting from one hundred million dollars bribe? Contract. Have you finished talking about those? Okay, let's go. Have you finished talking about the children who are in schools and school feeding caterers are on strike and they have not been fed? Have you finished talking about that? Have you finished talking about the people in Kumewu going to suffer the brunt of the conditionalities of the ill thought IMF deal? ECG and water tires going up. Have you talked about that? This campaign is stale. Bring the issues. And I, I know that you want to avoid the issues because if you go to the real-time issues, you will not have any message to share. The people are in pain. We saw your pickup for We saw the pickups that you were trying to move during the day. These are um, showroom pickups. At least 500,000 per each. If you are buying 275 of them for each constituency at 500,000 per Calculate how much did IMF give us for the first one? That's 600 million, right? If you do 500,000 CDs times 275, that's about 137 million. If you convert it to dollars, that's about 12 million. We are begging for 600 million when we have 12 million to buy pickup vehicles. Don't angry the people. Good morning. Sometimes we take a hard bite. Mm -hmm. It's not just as fun. Nowadays, when I listen to you, I even panic.